So now we have here sample problems. This is for oral in solid form. So an antihypertensive agent, minoxidil, lonitin, 5 mg per RM is ordered. The stock is 2.5 mg per tab. How many tablets should be administered? So first we have to determine the desired dose which is 5 mg. The stock dose is 2.5 mg per tab. Okay. So again we need to know the formula on how to compute the oral medication in solid form. So we have here solid uh sorry, we have here desired dose over the stock dose equals the quantity of drug. The quantity of drug means it is the drug or the amount of tablet that you will administer to your patient. Okay, so it is simply written as D over S equals Q. So we have here 5 milligrams, which is the desired dose, over the stock dose, which is 2.5 milligrams per tablet. So you have to cancel the same or similar units of measurement. So cancel milligrams here, then you have to divide 5 divided by 2.5 so it's 2 okay then you have to retain the tablet okay since it was not cancelled okay so we will give two tablets to our patient in order to yield 5 milligrams of minoxidil as ordered by your doctor we also have here oral medication in liquid form okay so the expectorant, guafenicin, robitocin, 300 mg per RM has been ordered. The bottle is labeled 100 mg per 5 ml. How many ml should be given? Okay. So let's determine first the desired dose. The desired dose is 300 mg. And the stock dose is 100 mg per 5 ml. So this means that in every 5 ml okay of dilution okay or fluid there is 100 milligrams of rubitocin so we have here formula desired dose over stock dose times dilution equals quantity of drugs simply formed as d over s times dilution equals q so we have here 300 milligrams which is the desired dose over 100 milligrams which is the stock dose times 5 ml which is the dilution okay so cancel the same or similar units of measurement so milligrams so 300 divided by 100 is 15 time is uh, 300 divided by 100 times 5 is 15 then you have to retain the ml since it was not cancelled so we will give 15 ml of this medication in order to yield 300 milligrams okay we also have here parenteral medication your subcutaneous route administration so a patient is to receive nph okay nph is one form of your insulin okay so your insulin is in units okay so we have here nph 50 units subcutaneous daily stock is 100 unit per ml in 10 vial how many ml should be administered okay so the desired dose here is 50 units okay and the stock is 100 units per ml so following the formula Desired dose over stock dose times dilution equals quantity of drug. So D over S times dilution equals Q. So we have here 50 units divided by 100 units times your dilution, which is 1 ml. Okay. So we need to cancel similar units. So units here cancelled. So 50 divided by 100 then times 1. So we will have... 0 0.5 then we need to copy the ml since it was not cancelled okay so the answer is 0 0.5 ml so we need to inject the medication amounting to 0 0.5 ml 
subcutaneously to our patient okay every day okay so that's it we also have here parenteral medication for your im injection or intramuscular so the physician's order reads administer 0 0.02 grams of furosemide lay 6 im furosemide here is the generic name which is an a diuretic okay and the LASIK there is the brand name. So usually brand names are enclosed in parentheses. Okay. The stock is 20 milligrams per 1 ml ampule. How many ml will you administer? Okay. So the desired dose here is 0 0.02 grams. And the stock dose is 20 milligrams per 1 ml. Okay. So by the way, some people write 20 milligrams per ml only they do not include 1 ml because when we say ml it is understood that it's 1 ml so meaning there in every 1 ml of dilution there is 20 milligrams of furosemide okay so it's the same thing either there's one or there's none that means it's 1 ml okay Desired dose must be converted to milligrams, the same unit of measurement with the stock dose. So we need to convert first, okay, before we use the formula for your uh, liquid form, okay, of solving the dosage, okay. So we will use here the conversion process. So one gram, we know that in one gram there is 1,000 milligrams, Okay, so here we have 0 0.02 grams times 1,000 milligrams over grams. Okay, we need to convert your grams to milligrams. So the same unit of measurement we have to cancel. Okay, so it gives us milligrams as our unit. Okay, so 0 0.02 times 1,000, that will give us 20. Okay, that's 20 milligrams. So, meaning we now have the same unit of measurement with your stock, okay? So, we can now proceed to dosage calculation using the formula. So, D over S times dilution equals Q. So, we have here the desired dose is 20 milligrams divided by the stock dose which is also 20 milligrams. So, we times 1 ml which is the dilution. So, we need to cancel the same units of measurement. So 20 over 20 times 1 is equal to 1 ml. So that means we need to give 1 ml of furosemide intramuscularly. Okay, we need to inject it intramuscularly. So that's it. We also have here IV fluid rates, okay? So the physician's order reads, administer D5LR one uh, D5LR 3 liters for 24 hours. So to how many drops per minute will you regulate the IVF? And how many ml per hour will you be infused? So we need to undergo two processes here. We need to compute for drops per ml and also ml per hour. So for letter A, we have here drops per minute so the formula for that is volume in cc times drop factor over number of hours times 60 minutes okay so the drop factor is given okay so the drop factor here is 15 drops per minute okay so we have here 3000 cc okay so we have to convert your 3 liters to cc or ml so that will give us 3000 cc okay times 15 which is our drop factor over 24 hours which is the time given here in the situation times 60 okay which is constant which means it is it's 60 minutes okay so we have here 45000 over 1450 then the answer for that is 31 drops per minute okay so in the event that you will have a decimal answer so you need to convert it to the nearest whole number okay 
So you, this, this means that you have to regulate your IV fluid 31 drops okay, in every 1 minute. Okay, there should be 31 drops per one per minute. Okay, so that's your drops per minute. Now, we will solve the ml or cc per hour. Okay, so the formula for that is volume in cc number over number of hours. Okay, so we have here 3,000 as the volume. Then the number of hours is 24. So the answer for that is 125 cc per hour. So you have to divide 3,000 to 24. So that's 100 c 125 cc per hour. So that means in every hour, the, the amount that should be infused to our patient is 125 cc. Okay? We also have here conversion of temperature. So first, we have here 38.3 degrees Celsius equal how many degrees Fahrenheit? So here we need to use the formula degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. So that is degrees Celsius times 1.8 plus 32. So we substitute the values given. So 38.3 times 1.5, that's 68.9, then you add 32. So that will give us 100.9 degrees Fahrenheit as the answer okay so meaning uh, 38.3 degrees Celsius is equivalent to 100.9 degrees Fahrenheit we also have here another example we have 108.6 degrees Fahrenheit equal how many degrees Celsius so we will be using the degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius formula that is degrees Fahrenheit minus 32, then we need to multiply it by 0.55, okay? So substituting the values, we have 108.6 degrees Fahrenheit minus 32, that is 76.6, then we multiply it by 0 0.55, okay? That will give us 42.1 degrees Celsius. Sorry, that is degrees Celsius, okay? Degrees Celsius, 42.1 degrees Celsius, okay? So that means that 108.6 degrees Fahrenheit is equivalent to 42.1 degrees Celsius, okay? Now we'll proceed to your pediatric doses. So the physician orders penicillin G sodium per IV, for a child who weighs 40 pounds, the usual dose of penicillin is 500,000 units. How many units should be given to the child? So first, we need to determine which method are we going to use. Okay. So given the situation, it mentioned about weight here. So we will use the Clark's rule. Okay. Because it... Uh, it needs weight for us to determine the safe child's dose. So, Clark's rule will be used in this situation. Okay, so now we have here, weight in pounds divided by 50 times usual dose, usual adult dose is equivalent to safe child's dose. So, substituting the values, so we have 40 pounds, okay? divided by 150 times 500,000 units. So that gives us 100, uh, 133,333 units, which is considered as the safe dose for the child weighing 40 pounds. Okay. So, so in the event that the situation or the problem gives you 40 kilograms, okay, so you have to convert kilograms to pounds, okay, in order to use the Clark's rule, okay? So that is very important that you should know how to convert units of measurements, okay, in order to uh, use the formula for that particular dosage calculation. So I believe this is the last slide of our discussion on dosage calculation. So... 